Elijah's days were now marked by a constant haze. As he wandered the corridors of the sanatorium, the cold tiles under his feet seemed to mock him with their rigidity. They had a set path, but he was lost, torn between the seductive allure of the treatment and the sinister warning of Legion. Each step brought memories of the war crashing back. The mud, the blood, the shrieks of pain and anguish. He recalled Michael, his best friend, whose eyes held the same haunted look that Elijah now saw in his own reflection. The memory of that artillery blast, Michael's screams muffled by the deafening roar, his body torn apart in front of Elijah, added a weight to Elijah's chest that made it hard to breathe. A sharp pain stabbed through his mind as he remembered the countless nights haunted by Legion, the demonic entity that seemed to be both his tormentor and, ironically, his protector. The cacophony of past traumas left him feeling cornered, trapped between two equally harrowing fates. A gentle hand on his shoulder broke him from his reverie. He turned to see Jonathan, a fellow patient whose sunken eyes and gaunt face reflected the toll the war had taken. You seem distant, Jonathan began, his voice rough from disuse. It's the treatment, isn't it? Elijah nodded, swallowing hard. I've been offered a chance. But after what I've seen, what I've been told... I know, Jonathan interrupted, his gaze sharp. There are tales, stories of those who've undergone it. Some say they've been reborn, free from the horrors of the past. Others. Hoist trailed off, but the implication hung heavy between them. The two walked to a quiet corner where a dim bulb flickered overhead. Jonathan cleared his throat. There's something you should know. I've seen one of those sessions. I was curious and horrified. Elijah's eyes widened. Jonathan's face contorted, as if recalling a painful memory. They strapped the man down, electrodes attached to his head. At first it seemed normal, just small jolts. But then they cranked it up. The man's body convulsed violently, blood streaming from his eyes, nose, even his ears. His screams. They haunt me. They said it was a necessary step in the procedure. Elijah felt bile rise in his throat. The weight of his decision felt even more burdensome now. Why would anyone go through that? Jonathan looked away, his voice breaking. For the same reason we fought in the war. Hope. The hope that maybe, just maybe, we'd find peace. Be free from the nightmares. Elijah's hand clenched into a fist. The weight of the decision bore down on him. But with Jonathan's words, a clarity began to form. The road ahead was uncertain. But he had faced uncertainty before. He took a deep breath. Thank you, Jonathan. You've given me something to ponder. No matter what I choose, I refuse to be a pawn in their twisted game. The two men shared a moment of understanding. The bond between them forged by shared pain and the looming shadows of choices yet to be made. The door to the treatment room loomed ahead. It felt heavier than any Elijah had ever encountered, symbolic of the threshold he was about to cross. He took a deep breath, letting the cold, sterile air fill his lungs. With a grim determination, he pushed open the door, entering what felt like the mouth of hell. Inside, the room was bathed in a harsh white light. The center was dominated by a chair that seemed more like a torture device than medical equipment. Straps dangled ominously from its arms and legs, and a tangle of wires led to a machine that blinked and hummed ominously. Doctors in white coats, their faces obscured by masks, bustled around. Ah, you've arrived, one of them said, jotting down notes on a clipboard. Please, take a seat. Elijah hesitated for a moment. Then, with a resolve born from desperation, he sat. Almost immediately, hands were on him, fastening the straps around his wrists and ankles. Another doctor approached, placing cold, metallic discs attached to wires on his forehead. The chill of the metal felt like ice on his already fevered skin. Remember, the leading doctor began, his voice cold and clinical. This is for your own good. 
Just relax and let the procedure do its work. A hum emanated from the machine as it powered up. Elijah's heart raced. He tried to focus, but a sudden jolt sent waves of pain coursing through him. It felt as if his very soul was being torn from his body. His mind became a chaotic whirlpool, memories assaulting him from all directions. He saw the trenches, the mud, the faces of friends lost to the war's merciless embrace. He felt the sting of bullets, the choking grip of gas, and the numbing cold of nights without end. Each memory was more vivid than the last. The pain, the sorrow, all magnified a hundredfold. And then, in the midst of the storm, Legion appeared. The entity's presence was overpowering, its form shifting and changing, mirroring the chaos inside Elijah's mind. Its voice, usually a whisper, now roared, Fool, you've invited them in. They'll strip away all that you are. Yet, amid the cacophony, another voice whispered, gentler, more familiar. Hold on, Elijah. Hold on. Was it his own inner strength? Or another entity trying to reach him? The machine's hum grew louder, drowning everything else. Sparks flew, a burning scent filled the air, and pain overwhelmed Elijah's senses. It felt as if his mind was being stretched, pulled apart, atom by atom. His vision darkened, the world around him fading, the voices, the memories, the agony all blurred into one, and as the tumultuous storm within him raged on, Elijah's consciousness slipped away, plunging him into an abyss of silence. The room was left in stillness, the machine's hum the only sound. The doctors exchanged glances, uncertainty clouding their eyes. The procedure was complete, but its outcome remained a haunting enigma.